As online, mobile, and other forms of digital banking and payments have developed, we've seen a noticeable increase in funds transfers that a consumer claims are fraudulent or were induced by a nefarious actor, and the consumer didn't understand or know what they were actually doing. These are called unauthorized EFTs, or unauthorized electronic funds transfers. An unauthorized EFT is defined as an electronic funds transfer from a consumer's account initiated by a person other than the consumer without actual authority to initiate the transfer and from which the consumer receives no benefit. These specifically include transfers initiated by a person who obtained a consumer's access device, as that's defined, or information through fraud or robbery. For example, what we see uh, frequently, when a consumer is fraudulently induced into sharing account or access information, like a username and password, with a third party, and that third party uses the information to make an EFT from the consumer's account, we have what's called an unauthorized EFT. There are many other examples of unauthorized EFTs, but what I want to focus on is liability. Liability for the consumer and liability for the financial institution. So the Electronic Funds Transfers Transfer Act and its implementing regulation E from the form the basis for compliance expectations and liability for electronic funds transfers generally. It is at its core a consumer protection statute that can significantly limit consumers' liability for unauthorized EFTs. So what does a consumer need to do in order to limit their liability? Well, it's all about timing. Generally, as long as the consumer notifies the financial institution within 60 days of receiving their periodic statement electronically or in paper on which that unauthorized EFT is reflected, the consumer can significantly limit their liability even if they are negligent in protecting their account access or account information. Okay, so then what does the financial institution need to try to do to limit their liability? Well, the financial institution has more work to do. And again, timing is critical. Recall, EFTA, Reg E are consumer protection statutes. So once the financial institution is notified by the consumer of an unauthorized EFT, the financial institution needs to investigate and remediate the situation within a relatively short amount of time. If they find that they can't investigate and, and fully come to an understanding of whether or not the EFT was authorized or unauthorized, if they need more time, they can extend the investigation, but they have to provisionally credit the consumer's account for the amount of the unauthorized EFT. If they determine, they being the financial institution, that, the er that an error was made, i.e. an unauthorized EFT was executed, they must correct the error almost immediately subject to the liability limits of the consumer that I mentioned before. So correcting the error here, what does that mean? It means making the consumer whole minus the consumer's share of liability, which tends to be somewhere in the $50 to $500 range. So what can financial institutions do to protect themselves and their customers? One, review and revise consumer account agreements to make sure that they include appropriate language and disclosures for your electronic funds transfers. Financial institutions should always review policies and procedures for resolving errors like unauthorized EFTs. And finally, review the actual practices at your financial institution for complying with these and other provisions of the Electronic Funds Transfer Act and Regulation E. As always, we're here to help, but in the meantime, stay tuned for more minutes on the matter from DW. Thanks and have a great day.